Everton have announced the signing of Czech Tossin for around £27 million pounds from Besiktas. The, the deal stalled for quite a while and didn't go it didn't happen quite as quickly as we expected. We thought he'd be ready in time for the Merseyside derby, but the signing was only announced during that game. Um, we didn't have time to register him. Earlier that day, on the 5th of January, I got the chance to speak to Emre Saragov, who runs a website called TurkishFootball.com. Um, he knows a lot about Turkish football, so we thought he'd give us a bit more of an idea of what's in store with our new signing. And we asked him a little bit about the Merseyside derby that was coming up later that day. Obviously, with his new allegiances to Everton, Henry boldly predicted a 3-2 win. But things didn't quite go that way. So things that were discussed, and uh, particularly that game that were in the past. Welcome to the Toffee Views. Quite a different episode of the Opposition View for the change. Obviously, with the impending transfer of Czech Tossin, then... We just thought it, and obviously quite a few of the fans might not know a bit about him, you know, might be a bit curious as to find out what type of player he is, what type of striker he is. So, with us today, we've got the co-founder of a website called TurkishFootball.com, Emre Saragol. So, Emre, nice to have you on, mate, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Um, so, obviously, quite with Turkish football, it's not as... Um, not as covered and, and not as watched, probably not not as much as it should be anyway in terms of access access to it. So in terms of like Spanish football and Italian football, so quite a lot of the fans might not know much about Tossin and the type of player that he is. So could you just, just describe like what type of striker he is and what his style of play is like? No, Jake Tossin, he's a dual footed striker. I'd say he's an all rounded forward. He uh, he's good in the air. Very good with his feet. He's not the quickest, so that's the one concern. But um, otherwise, he's he's an he's an all round centre forward. He can, he's quite versatile. He can play out wide. He can play as a load front man. He can play um, with two strikers. So there's plenty of options for Big Sam. Yeah. So we, I think the the big question mark is really over when someone relatively unknown comes into the Premier League, especially at a team like Everton at the moment, because we are going through quite a, a sticky patch in terms of form and in terms of attacking outlets in the side, we're really limited. So do you, do you feel like he'd be able to adapt to the Premier League well? I think he would adapt better than most people think, because... Something a lot of people forget about Cenk is that he initially made it through the ranks of Frankfurt. He was actually born in Germany and he's used to a different style of play. He's used to the Bundesliga style of play, which um, obviously isn't the same, but it's more similar to the Premier League than, say, the Turkish League. Um, where he's really excelled is at the highest level in the Champions League. Um, I know many your followers may not have watched him in the Turkish League unless they've been on holiday to Turkey recently. Um, but they probably have seen a few games or highlights of what he's been up to um, in the Champions League. So um, I think he'll adapt better than most people think. He does speak English. I think that'll be a big factor. He's already used to moving to different cities, to different countries. And what he's always been able to do is adapt and not cause a problem for the managers. He's very good at doing what is asked for him, what is asked of him, and carrying it out. So to say. Yeah, then just ju- just to kind of touch on that, you you kind of you refer him to his mentality there. He seems like he seems like a really strong mentality for an attacking for player, really, and. There was quite a, a saga over the the, um, the fee that Everton were meant to be paying for him. I know the, the the initial thoughts were to be around twenty five million pounds, but obviously, um, I think the rumor was the replacement that Besiktas are lining up. The the asking price got bumped up, so apparently Besiktas wanted a few million, and apparently they've agreed on around twenty seven million pounds now. Do you feel like that would be an an issue, or do you think that as a player? It won't really affect him, and he'll just play his game as usual. I think it won't affect him. He'll play his game as usual. He 
he isn't one to cause controversy in the team. He's a great team player. I think that's one of his main strengths. He's very hard working. He does what's asked of him. No questions asked. Um, as for the fee, I think Everton are getting a bargain and Besiktas are getting a good deal because he's going to break the Super League record um, in terms of an outgoing transfer. And as for Everton, I mean, £27 million is no small fee, but for a Premier League side, um, signing a striker who's achieved what he has, I, I don't think it's over the odds at all. Yeah, you, you said that you feel like, you know, we're getting quite a good deal for him and the the response from Besiktas fans are certainly, you know, from, from our videos, whenever we've done a video on Tosin, the Besiktas fans are overwhelm, overwhelmingly supportive of the move. They obviously have great affection for him. You get There's been the odd fan who feels like um, they pulled our pants down a little bit with the fee, maybe that we're, we're, we're overpaying, but can you kind of sum up what the attitude is towards Tosin by the Besiktas fans? Well, I mean, when we talking about Cenk, we have to remember, he arrived at Besiktas as a third-choice striker. Nothing was expected of him when he initially joined. And he's gone on to become the people's champ, so to say. He's won over the fans because what he's done is he's worked and worked and worked. He has never stopped trying. He doesn't give up. And so he's won over the fans with, with his commitment to the team. He's never caused a problem. He's never um, spot controversy. He's never caused a problem with the fans or the manager. So he's become a bit of a hero. And everyone's really happy for him because it feels like he's one of them. Like he, he's, he's a player a lot of people can relate to. He's, he's, he's humble. He's, he's not egotistical like um, a few other players maybe on his side who we won't mention mm. but um, yeah there's there's a feeling like someone from the family is left and is going over to the Premier League so Everton's going to Everton not, have not only signed Cenk they've also signed a load of Turkish fans I'm sure you're going to have a lot of interest from um, Besiktas and not just Besiktas I think a lot of Turkish fans in general are going to be very interested in how he does because it's a bit of a milestone in the league um, in regards to the transfer fee, and he's generally liked um, regardless of club affiliation. Yeah, the, you can you can you touched on it there, mentioning the the people's champ. So you know, coming come to the people's club, do you feel like it will be a um, a good marriage? Do you feel like Everton is the right club for him? Well, you wanted Everton, Crystal Palace made him a decent offer in the summer. He turned it down. They came back for him. And he said no. Also, Besiktas were keen on him joining, um, I mean, no offence to Palace, but a club with, let's say, more tradition. Mm. Um, I mean, Everton has um, something special to it. Going to Everton's a big club. Mm. Um, he really wanted to move. Besiktas were happy for it to happen. So it's a win-win situation. Um, I, I think my only concern is with Big Sam. Um, I mean, if he's going to play very defensive and mm. and Cenk isn't going to get many um, shots, I mean, or many chances to prove himself, it's going to be a problem as for any striker. Well, I think given a chance and if he's given the right support from the more creative players in the side, he he's pretty well set up to play Premier League football. Because he is a physical player. He's um, he'll get stuck in, so to say, which I think will go down with well with the fans. Yeah. He tracks back, he tackles, he's not afraid to put a challenge in. So I think as a player he's well suited for the league. It all depends on obviously how he deals with his team. <laughs> how he adapts to Big Sam's tactics, because it's going to be a big change from what he's used to now. Yeah, so just as you kind of, you, you hinted on earlier, you know, there was the club currently, because I know that there are current few issues that are rumoured to go on inside the, the changing rooms, and 
previously, but there's no secret about the ego of Romelu Lukaku. So, and just on, on that note, for as, as an Everton fan sitting there watching this transfer happen, it does look like this is finally the replacement for Lukaku. If you like, you know, the, the, the striker that can score goals is finally coming in and it looks like he will be that starting man for us now. Um, so, in comparison to Lukaku, in that, you know, Lukaku sometimes used to just, was, although it was very frustrating at times, he did just have moments of brilliance and could grab goals out of, anywhere, out of nowhere, pretty much. So, do you see that being any different with Tosin? Do you feel like he'll be similar to Lukaku and that he can kind of carry the team on his back in terms of goals? Or do you feel like it might take a while for him to settle in? Oh, that's the big question. I mean, he has the ability, like, what he's developed this season especially, <coughs> is that he gets involved a lot more with the attack and play. So I think, I mean, he won't just provide goals, he'll also be good, um, he'll be quite useful in attacking moves. He's got some really good assists. Um, his He's very intelligent. He makes clever runs. So, I mean, I think, I think he, he he's gonna do he's gonna do well. Obviously, he needs a bit of time. I think if the fans give him the support, he's a player that responds very well to being backed by the by the fans and a bit of love. Because, I mean, at Besiktas, at the big Turkish clubs. There's huge pressure, but if the fans are behind you, it's like you've got you've got the 12th man there. You've, you've got, I mean, full stadium back. You've got millions of fans just giving you that confidence. So I think if Everton fans get behind him from the beginning, and he gets off to a good start, he'll um, he'll surprise many people. Yeah. I definitely do feel like the fans will get behind him because, you know, as, as I've mentioned before and as, as has been the talking point amongst Evertonians this season, really, we really lack in uh, attacking quality. So, to, for a player of this calibre to come in, and I know might, quite a lot of people might not watch Turkish football, as I said before, but there, there's no secret as to how big of a club Besiktas is. You know, they're a huge club and whoever plays there will have massive expectations asked of them. So, I've got no problems. I can't see it being a problem, really. I can see the fans getting right behind them and supporting them. So I really don't think that would be a hard adjustment for them to make. Yeah, so, you know, and t- tonight as well, we've got the, the Merseyside Derby in the FA Cup. It, do- it doesn't look like he's been registered in time because I know that I think the, the registering time for that was half an hour ago, but... There's not been, been been mentioned really as as to whether Toss has been included, but just just as, as, as from an outsider's perspective, how do you feel like that game's gonna go? Well, I would have loved um, Jake to have been registered in time because mm. one thing that he's excelled at is being a big match player. On the high pressure pressure situations, he's proved himself. And he's the man of the match just a few weeks ago. In the derby against Galatasaray, where he's we actually scored in the three 0 win. I mean, if you look at his Champions League games, he's he's um, really shone. Um, after tonight, um, well, now that I'm an Everton fan, Jenk doesn't join it. Where am I blue? Uh, I mean, it's it's going to be tough. But Liverpool's defence worries me. I think I think uh, I think. Um, 3-2, Everton. Oh, well, there we have it. You know, we'll, I think we'll take that every day of the week. So, hopefully, I mean, who knows, maybe the club might pull one out of the bag and, uh, and he, might, he might actually be in the squad for tonight. We just don't know. I mean, that would be nice to be the case. But um, as, as of now, I think we're just going to have to wait to see the debut of, of Jack Tosson, really. So um, that's it for the, for this week's episode. I just want to say a, a big thank you to Emre again. I know you can find some of his work on The Guardian and on Bleacher Report as well, so go and check some of that out if you've got the time. So thanks for coming on, man. I've appreciated it. Good luck tonight. Right. Thanks, mate. See you soon.
Bye-bye. Right, so that's it for this week's episode of The Opposition View. It's been a Czech tossing special, really, thanks to the insight from Emre. I'm sure Turkish football fans as well as the Besiktas fans that watch this video will know where to find his work. Um, like, comment and subscribe. You know, the subscribers are well over 300 now and it's really good to see all the fans engaging. Um, give us your opinion on this transfer. Do you feel like it'll go as smooth as Emre suggests or do you feel like Czech Tottenham is going to struggle to adapt to a struggling Everton side? Um, I've been Max for the Toffee Blues and I'll see you soon.